people call me an audiologist. Others call me a hearing nerd. Being human with hearing loss is like my superpower. As a hearing doctor, I get to help people hear their best while learning about the mysteries of hearing. Hello humans, welcome back to Dr. Rose Helps You Hear. I'm Stephanie Rose and today I'm going to show you what it's like to hear with a cookie bite hearing loss. I'm an audiologist that practices at House Institute in Orange, California. I love my job and part of it is to show family and friends what it's like to have a hearing loss of a particular patient. So this is a great tool to be able to demonstrate. Also, I wanted to say thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. It really means a lot to me and helps me to know I'm doing a great job, so thank you. A cookie bite hearing loss means that you have good low frequencies and good high frequencies, so the hearing loss is primarily in the middle frequencies. What does this mean? Well, you're about to hear what it means, but let me show you on the audiogram what that looks like. So, here's the audiogram. We have soft to loud and low pitch to high pitch like a piano. So you'll see with these purple uh, circles which represent the right ear that the normal hearing line stops at about 25 decibels. So we have normal hearing here at 250 and 500 and normal hearing at six and eight. This slopes from uh, basically into a moderate middle, middle frequency uh, sensory neural hearing loss. So usually we see the cookie bite shape uh, as something that is congenital, meaning you're born with it. Uh, it can also sometimes carry throughout the family. So if anyone in your family has a cookie bite, you should definitely get your hearing tested. When you do have a cookie bite hearing loss, you can certainly wear hearing aids if the thresholds are outside of that normal region. Usually, cookie bite hearing loss uh, patients uh, do not have trouble necessarily with volume, but the clarity definitely is affected. Things might seem a little bit muffled, and with the use of hearing aids, you can definitely restore some of that clarity. So now we'll move on to the demonstration where I'm using a VeriFit 1. Um, it's basically the same machine I use to do real ear measures when I'm programming and fitting hearing aids. I'm going to put that same audiogram you just saw into the computer, and it's going to show us a conversation between a man and a woman, first through the hearing loss, and then I will switch it to with normal hearing so that you can hear that stark difference with a cookie bite and without a cookie bite. Okay, so here we go with the demonstration or simulation of what it's like to hear two average talkers through a cookie bite hearing loss. Here we go. Here it is through normal. So you're not going to be able to do this. Is that what you're telling me? I'm telling you that's probably what I'm going to do. Oh. I'll not do it. You're just going to sit here and listen? Yes. Tell me about work. How was your day? I don't want to talk about work. <laughs> the less I talk about work, the better I feel, especially on my day off. Okay. Back so to the you're loss. You're not going to be able to do this. Is that what you're telling me? I'm telling you that's probably what I'm going to do. Okay. You're just going to sit here and listen? Yes. Tell me about work. How was your day? And back to normal. So you're not going to be able to do this. Is that what you're telling me? I'm telling you that's probably what I'm going to do. Oh. I'm not do it. You're just going to sit here and listen? Yes. Tell me about work. How was your day? I don't want to talk about work. <laughs> the less I talk about work, the better I feel, especially on my day off. So one thing after hearing that simulation of what it's like to hear with the cookie bite hearing loss, one thing I noticed is that it is really hard to hear the male talker. So. For some reason, with those you know lower pitched voices, it's really hard to catch it through this moderate cookie bite hearing loss. So I hope that that was beneficial in that if you have any friends or family with this particular hearing loss and maybe they don't have hearing aids yet or they're not wearing them because it's time to go to bed, um, 
You definitely want to speak at an elevated volume and definitely separate your words so that they come out very clearly. It also helps to slow down the speech just a tad so that the words don't run together and create something called co-articulation. If you watch my sloping hearing loss video, I go more into what co-articulation is and how to prevent it, but very simply, you just separate your words and make sure that they each come out individually. Hearing loss comes in all different shapes on the audiogram, but this is very interesting to an audiologist because once we do your hearing test, we can kind of see what the possible etiology might be. So if you go to um, uh, an office and they're asking you to bring an audiogram, this is partly the reason to help diagnose you. So make sure that you get it ahead of time or confirm that they've received it before you go to your appointment. When you have a cookie bite hearing loss, sometimes it's not detected in early childhood stages and sometimes it can have a later onset. So maybe in teenage years or even up into you know, the, uh, age 20 to 30. Uh, so once you do get diagnosed with it, you wanna make sure that you get it checked annually. Sometimes with the genetics, it can be programmed to change over time. So especially if you wear hearing aids, you should be getting your hearing checked annually, if not every six months, if you have an asymmetry or are told otherwise from your audiologist or otologist, um, so that your hearing aids can be reprogrammed uh, because when we fine tune it to the audiogram, you will hear your best. Okay, so that's today's video for a cookie bite simulated hearing loss. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe and you have a nice rest of your day and stay well out there.